Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, hello, my name is V. I post nail tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. I'm so excited to be trying out some new products for you guys. These are the extra, extra, extra long C-curve tips from Not Polish. You can see they're full sculpted. That C-curve is super deep, which is amazing. I love sculpted nails, so these are the perfect dupe for that. So I'm going in and applying these to my practice hand. I am using my Young Nails Brush on Glue. It is my go-to. It dries very, very quickly, which makes the adhering process of the tip to the natural nail very easy. And I love how quickly that process goes. So I'm just applying that to the very tip of the natural nail, making sure that I'm firmly pressing that in. And I'm not going in order because these are still in the baggies. I don't have them in a box. So I'm searching through that bag of tips to kind of see the sizes. And so as I come across the size that I feel like is going to fit the best, that's the way I'm placing them. Now I know the ring finger and my index finger for the practice hand are the exact same size. So I'm going to be using the same size on those. I definitely love how long they are. However, because this is a practice hand and because I am doing a tutorial for you guys, I am going to cut them down and I'm using my nail tip cutters for this step. And I definitely wanted to use nail tip cutters versus just nail clippers or scissors because it has that curved edge to it, which helps with that deep C curve. And it's not going to overly bend that tip where you can see the white little lines. So I'm kind of just sizing them out to the length that I want. They're still super long. Another new product that I'm using for today's video is the Not Polish Monomer. This is super highly requested and I finally got my hands on it, which I'm really, really excited. And you guys can see their beautiful new Dappen dish I also received. It's so, so pretty and it comes with that crystal in the background. So I am using my Not Polish acrylic brush in the size 12 for today's video. So whenever I first placed that bead onto the tip, it threw me off completely because I'm so used to using different monomers that whenever I use this, the butteriness to the acrylic just came together. Like you guys are so used to hearing me say that the not polished powders are super buttery, but now in combination with the monomer, they are extra buttery, which I'm really excited about. You can definitely tell that the products are meant for each other. So I'm going ahead and doing my normal acrylic application process. With their monomer, I also realized that it grabs a little bit more product versus my other monomer. I'm not sure if it just dries a little bit quicker, but I would get smaller beads with the same amount of liquid to powder ratio. So I'll be doing another video really in depth on that so you guys can kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about. But if you are new to my channel and you wanna know a little bit more about liquid to powder ratio, I do have a really in depth video on that. I go super, super in depth, which is very helpful if you are new to the nail world and are struggling in that area. That is going to change your acrylic application game completely and you will be able to master doing nails very quickly once you figure all that out. So I'm just going ahead and applying that as my base. This is Fiesta Sista from Not Polish. I am using very large beads of acrylic for this step because these are really long nails and I'm not going to be encapsulating in clear, which means I need to add a little bit of thickness with that pink color. So I'm just applying as needed now because these are C-curved tips. You wanna make sure you are focusing on the sides as well. I kept forgetting that these sides come down a little bit. So I do recommend you guys to remember that whenever you are using these tips, but I do really like how they are turning out. I'm going ahead and using a large bead of acrylic in the middle section and I start lightly patting it downwards. I'm not using too much effort when I'm doing this step. I don't overthink it. I feel like that's where a lot of nail techs issues come in is when you overthink it and you start really trying to mold it when in reality, when you're using really good products like the not polished ones, you don't have to 
do too much moving. It almost self levels on its own. It goes the direction where you place the finger. So for example, here, I want it to go downward. So I instantly grab the finger and face it downward so that the product naturally flows to the tip and not into the cuticle area. Especially when working in the cuticle area, you definitely want to make sure that that finger is facing downwards or pointing downwards. Then I'm just blending all that powder in with the existing powder, adding a little bit more wherever I feel is necessary. Very, very light pressure when dragging and patting. Like I said, it does a lot of the work for you. You just kind of have to manipulate it a little bit to the side that you want it to go. Now, I know a lot of you guys are gonna want to know if it is low odor monomer. In my experience, I have smelt the worst smelling monomers ever. So this is definitely on the low odor side. If you are familiar with Young Nails monomer, Profiles Backstage monomer, the not polished one goes hand in hand with those. They are, obviously they still smell like monomer. However, it is on the lower side of the harsh smells compared to other ones that I've smelled. So that's a quick little uh, first hand review in my opinion. I'm also very used to the monomer smell. So I normally get my husband to smell it as well. And he also agreed that it was low odor. So I'm going ahead and filing once everything is nice and dry. I am using my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file and filing the sides. I do try to keep my application as smooth as possible, but you guys can tell tremendously the difference when I go in and file. So the importance of finish filing and trying to perfect your filing process is super, super important as well. Especially with longer nails, you can definitely see the flaws a lot more noticeable so make sure you guys are taking the time to file the sides nice and straight hold your file perfectly these files are the best in my opinion i've yet to find any that i like better than these so i am going ahead and again filing the sides and then i directly go into filing the surface of the nail i just go vertically up and down filing it with medium pressure i'm not trying to remove bulk product i'm just trying to smooth that surface out so that we don't have any lumps or ridges and this file works perfectly for that
Now I do like to use my e-file for the cuticle area and I'm using my Kiara Sky e-file at about eight to 9,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using my Kiara Sky 5-in-1 bit. This one is the silver one in the medium grit. I love these for filing. They are so good. And especially because it has that tapered tip, it works really well in the cuticle area. So I'm just going around very gently around the cuticle, making sure that the acrylic is nice and flush. You do not want that product to be super bulky because that does cause lifting. Now I am flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective and then I'm squaring off that tip making sure that the shape is nice and perfect at this point. This is a good angle to look at the nails from as you can see flaws that you might not be able to see from your perspective but that the client might catch and I say this in every single one of my videos it's really important that you catch the mistakes before they point them out so make sure you are aware of every single angle I constantly move the finger side to side whenever I'm applying and when I'm filing so that I can see if anything needs to be fixed. So keep that in mind if you are doing a client's nails. Now I'm taking my buffer from Profiles Backstage and I am going in on the surface of the nails. I am buffing the nail, making sure that it is super, super smooth because I'm going to be doing nail art over top. So I am going with a very good amount of pressure, trying to get any little ridges or anything left behind from that hand file or that e-file. I'm going in with the lint-free wipe and some swipe. I am cleaning the surface of the nail along with my practice hands so she doesn't look crusty. Definitely recommend this product hands down. It's one of my must-haves in my books. I love it for dehydrating the natural nail. It works so good along with prepping the nail for some nail art. So definitely recommend if you guys are looking for a good product. Now I'm using this really pretty purple called Purple Rain from Profiles Backstage. It is just their gel polish along with Sweet Talker from Profiles Backstage as well. It's like a muted, nice nude color. And then She's a Pistol from Young Nails from their Go Time collection. I wanted to do brighter colors, so that's why I chose those. But I also wanted to mute it a little bit with the nude instead of just using plain white. So I'm using Blossom Gel from Not Polished. This is another one of the new products that I received from them. I've been dying to get my hands on this product. I see so many nail techs use this so many different ways and I wanted to get my hands on it. So I am scooping up a little bit of each color and then directly placing that on the wet surface of that Blossom Gel. I'm not doing it carefully. I'm honestly just dabbing it on there, kind of dragging it a little bit, but not being too precise. And then we're gonna be moving on to the next nail. I definitely would recommend you guys do all of the nails with the Blossom Gel first. I just got a little too excited to try it, so I went finger to finger and I was like in awe the entire time. But if you are doing it on a client or yourself, go ahead and Put that as your base and then go in with your colors so you can marble and they can all set the same amount of time. So that's a quick little inside thought of mine. And again, I'm just taking those three colors, scooping them up with a 3D nail art brush from Profiles Backstage. You can use a gel brush. Any thicker brush that you might have works well for it. Again, I'm applying a thin coat of this grabbing all three colors, and I start randomly placing it on top of that. So I feel like the key to the Blossom Gel is working in very thin layers because it is so thick. 
and because you are going to be layering on already more gel polish definitely try to make it as thin as possible because you don't want the colors to leak all over the place and then it be too bulky i pride myself in my shape and i try to focus a lot on that i'm going to show you guys exactly what i did to kind of prevent the bulkiness around the edges So once I applied all the colors, I'm taking my clean 3D brush, the same one I used to apply the colors, and I'm just wiping it across the edges because I don't need color on those sides. It's okay to do this, and because I'm using that pink base as one of the colors as well, it's perfectly fine. The product is still going to flow into the sides a little bit, so they're not going to be completely naked, and I'm just kind of blending it out so that it's a little bit thinner on the sides. I actually did apply a little bit more nude on some of the nails just because I felt like I didn't put enough. And I'm just putting it on there. And as you can see, the design already is coming to life and I'm so excited. And I placed it in the light. This is what it looks like directly out of the light. And I'm like staring at it because it looks so cool. Now I'm taking Not Polish Matte, of course. I know you guys probably hate me already. <laughs> but I'm just applying a thin layer of that. Again, I don't want to add too much bulkiness to the nail as I already layered so much on there. So I am just applying a super thin layer of that on to the surface of the nail art. Making sure that I am getting all the surface nice and smooth and then I'm going to be placing that in the light for two minutes just to be safe and make sure every angle is nice and cured. But this is such an easy design. You can do it with so many colors. I cannot wait to do some summer ones with these with like blues and make it look like the beach. I feel like it's so, so pretty. So I'm definitely gonna be trying more combinations and different designs with the Blossom Gel. Definitely recommend it. Don't forget to shop their website and use my discount code to save a little bit of money. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.